Hello, and welcome to this film about carboxylic acids. Um, hopefully you're coming to this film having watched the films about alcohols and aldehydes and ketones. This functional group's got quite a lot in common with them, but there's also some very important differences. So like in the previous films, we're going to look at the functional group itself and see what it looks like in a molecule. We're going to name molecules with this functional group in them, and we're also going to understand what we mean by a fatty acid. Um, we're going to explain the physical properties of carboxylic acids, and we're going to know the names of some reactions that they take part in. Okay, let's start off by talking about the functional group itself and seeing what it looks like. Here it is, circled in this molecule. So it's a carbon-oxygen double bond, as well as a carbon-oxygen-hydrogen bond. So this bit looks like a bit like an alcohol. This bit looks a bit like an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay, but the two of them together means you've got a carboxylic acid. If I don't specify what's on this end here, so if I call it a general R group, then I'm going to have R, C, double bond O, OH. And if I write the formula of these things, then I write it as COOH. So CH3, COOH. Some people call this CO2H, but in the waste course they prefer you to use COOH. Now, naming carboxylic acids should be quite a simple affair because we've used these prefixes many times before. We've just got to spot how many carbons there are. We've only got to do this for straight chains again, so no branched examples needed. Okay, we've got two carbons here and a carboxylic acid functional group, so this is ethan for two carbons, and all carboxylic acids end in oic acid. Okay, so that's ethanoic acid. Here's a carboxylic acid with one, two, three, four, five, six carbons and a carboxylic acid functional group at the end. So this is hexanoic acid. You might be wondering, is it important that I specify where the functional group is in the molecule? Well, it can only ever be on the end. Okay, so you don't really need to say anything about that. Some molecules will actually have a carboxylic acid at both ends, and then we do need to specify it, but I won't worry about that at this stage. Okay, physical properties. We're going to look at very similar things to before. So let's look for some polar bonds and maybe some lone pairs. Here's a polar bond. So there's going to be dipole-dipole interactions. Here's a very polar bond between a highly electronegative element and a hydrogen. So there's also going to be hydrogen bonding. So if I was to compare the boiling points of these molecules with those of alcohols and aldehydes and ketones and alkanes. Well, for similar molecular weight compounds, so that is ones with similar dispersion forces, because these can form dipole-dipole interactions here and hydrogen bonds there, I'd expect these to have higher boiling points than all the compounds we've looked at up until now. As far as solubility in water goes, once again, we need to kind of consider two things here because we're going to have a non-polar part of our carboxylic acid molecule and we're going to have a polar part and this polar part can form lots of different hydrogen bonds with water because the hydrogens can form the hydrogens of water can form hydrogen bonds with the lone pairs and the oxygen of water can form hydrogen bonds with the hydrogen so we'd expect them to be at least as soluble in water as alcohols and probably more soluble in water than aldehydes and ketones. Okay, Don't need to predict when they're going to stop being soluble in water but the bigger this group becomes the more able it is to overcome the solubility of this end and eventually these molecules become insoluble. Now there's a particular type of carboxylic acid that we end up looking at in the waste course and that is a fatty acid now, they're called fatty acids because they're obtained from fats. And really the most important thing about them is that, well, one, they've got a carboxylic acid functional group in them, so C double bond O, OH, okay? But they've also got rather a long carbon chain. Now, if you think about it, this is going to be a long non-polar section to the molecule. So it will be fat-soluble. It will dissolve in non-polar solvents. Okay, so this end is fat soluble. 
Whereas this end is water soluble. Okay. So that's going to be worth considering later on when we look at where these molecules come in. Okay. But just for now, just saying what a fatty acid is, and that is a molecule that's got quite a long carbon chain attached to its carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, and they're called fatty acids because we get them from fats. Now, what reactions do carboxylic acids take part in? Well, all the usual acid reactions. So they'll react with metals to produce hydrogen. They'll react with carbonates to produce carbon dioxide and water. They'll react with bases to produce a salt and water, and so on. Okay, but over and above those usual acid reactions, we need to know that they'll form esters in esterification reactions. So if we react them with alcohols, as we've said in the alcohols film, we'll make esters. They'll take part in other condensation reactions, because in actual fact, esterification reactions can also be called condensation reactions. But if you react them with amines, they'll make things called amides. OK, so we need to know about those reactions as well as the usual acid reactions. OK, but we'll look into the reactions in more depth later. As for making carboxylic acids, how do you do this? Well, you can oxidize a primary alcohol. If you oxidize it enough, it will go past an aldehyde and all the way to a carboxylic acid. We'll look at this later. Or you could oxidize an aldehyde. You can also hydrolyze an ester. So you can break an ester down into its component parts. And remember, when we take a carboxylic acid and react it with an alcohol, we make an ester. So when we break it down, we're going to get a carboxylic acid and an alcohol back. OK, so once again, to summarize, we wanted to know what this functional group looked like and how to name molecules with this functional group in them. We've looked briefly at what fatty acids are, although this will come up more when we look at soaps later on. We've explained the physical properties of carboxylic acids and we've named the reactions. If there's any questions, as usual, please feel free to post a comment on YouTube or to come and find me and ask your questions in person.